can come back. Today, I'm proud to declare that the United States is in the midst of an economic boom, the likes of which the world has never seen before. Today, I'm pleased to announce the United States will join One Trillion Trees Initiative being launched here at the World Economic Forum. One Trillion Trees. And in doing so, we will continue to show strong leadership in restoring, growing, and better managing our trees and our forests. But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. They are the heirs of yesterday's foolish fortune tellers, and I have them, and you have them, and we all have them. And they want to see us do badly, but we don't let that happen. They predicted an overpopulation crisis in the 1960s, mass starvation in the 70s, and an end of oil in the 1990s. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country, or eradicate our liberty. America will always be the proud, strong, and unyielding bastion of freedom. In America, we understand what the pessimists refuse to see, that a growing and vibrant market economy focused on the future lifts the human spirit and excites creativity strong enough to overcome any challenge, any challenge by far. A grapefruit cocktail in five seconds. All right, fellow Juan Maki. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim and Kakwadash for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh, who the world inevitably calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world inevitably calls Jesus Christ. And there's no God beside them. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect. And this lesson is going to be based upon the brother, um, GMS. Out of my spirit, because they don't live there. In his lesson entitled Business Group Warns of Mass Layoffs and Catastrophic Supply Chain Disruptions, right? And it's based upon this article, which led me to think as I was watching the brother's lesson of the former um, president of the U.S., DJ. And um, his statement about the perennial prophets of doom. Now, whether he was talking about us in specific or all those that, you know, know the truth of this wicked, this wicked place. All right. And speak out against it. It remains to be seen. However, the word perennial should put you in mind of us, you know, because we don't just speak about what we believe is going to come to this place, all right, but we tell you it in prophecy, and we tell you things that are far off, you know, for example, the MOTB, you know, our apostles and elders, they've been speaking about this even before it was so, it was widely known. Okay? Because on the Lord, the scriptures say, which I'm going to grab, let's just grab it actually instead of speaking on it. Instead of just speaking on it. This is Amos chapter 3. I'll start at 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and Yahweh have not done it? Okay, so we don't just speculate. As the scriptures goes on to say, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So again, we tell you things that are far off, to whereas at that point in time it might have been a secret. To us, it's not a secret. The most high, you know, some way, shape, or form, Speak to us through the Holy Spirit, through the Rakakwadash. All right? Through first and foremost the scriptures, 
because everybody doesn't understand the scriptures, even though they may read it. And then he gives us through the spirit to understand the scriptures and to marry it with current events. Because here it is, you have, as I mentioned, you have you may have people that can go into current events, but don't understand how that plays into the Lord's long-term plans. Okay? And we understand, as I mentioned before, how our apostles were going into Revelations 13 and 16 and MOTB, how that's the end all be all. All right? So he revealed his secrets into his servants, the prophets. And according to Ezekiel 12, right? I'm going to grab Ezekiel 12 and 23. It says, tell them to them is Ezekiel. The, the Lord is speaking to Ezekiel to tell Israel, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord power. I will make this proverb to cease and they shall no more use it. As a problem in Israel, but say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more in any there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. Alright? Because you have certain people that may say that prosperity is coming to this place. Okay? Or at that point in time, that prosperity was coming to Israel, right? For I am Yahweh, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged. Right? Because we know the secret, we're telling you the secret, but you don't believe it because it's not in your face. You know, it's basically like a rumor. It's he said, she said. Okay? As the scriptures say in 2 Chronicles 36 and 15, that the Most High rose up his prophets beat time, meaning early, to warn the people. Okay? But at a certain point in time, there's a set day, there's a set hour, there's a set second that the Most High will allow those uh, troubles to come upon the people. In the book of Genesis uh, 6, I want to say. Let me grab that. Because that proves the point there. In Genesis, as the story of Noah proves, you know that the Lord doesn't all reveal his 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 um his plans to everybody. He just told Noah to build the ark, you know. And um, when the time came, it was just for his salvation. For everybody else, they was going you know drink some water. They was going to get drowned. Um. Yep, point right here, Genesis 7. All right, so Noah, as we, uh, I was skimming through Genesis 6, speaking about how, you know, the Lord told him to build the ark. The Lord, the Lord told him to bring the animals in the ark. Uh, was it seven clean and two unclean? Right? And it says, and it came to pass after seven days, Genesis 7 and 10, that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, you know what? It's a lot here. Shlaki, this is um Genesis five and thirty-two, and Noah was five hundred years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Jumping down to Gen jumping down to Genesis six and nine. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect 
in his generation in Noah walk with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right, in the 500 year. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked into the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Right? And we can marry that with today, or we can compare that to today, to where the Mo, Mo, the Mo movement, all right, the transformer movement is, um, you know, it's taken over the earth by storm. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shalt thou have any ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Okay. So that was at the 500 year mark or around then, right? So we jump down to Genesis 7. And in the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. You see? So there was a point in time, there was a lengthy point in time to where the ark was being created, you know what I'm saying? The ark, the ark was being created. All right, you could spiritually look at it as to where there was time to get your mind right, you know, time to um <laughs> repent. And then there was a set day, it was a set month, it's a set, you know what I'm saying, set month, set year, set day that the Lord said, "Okay, I had enough of it." All right, and then that's when destruction came upon everybody. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And the self same day entered Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, Noah's wife, three wives, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort, and they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two flesh, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Right? Jump it down to verse 21. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Both fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land, died. All right, so now when we go back to Ezekiel 12 and 25, for I am Yahweh, I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged, be put off. For in your days, O ye rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord power. Again, the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come. And he prophesieth of times that are far off. Therefore, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. Okay? So, there's going to come a time when the Most High destroys this place, but in the meantime, you know, it's, it's going to seem like a secret, you know? People are going to continue to go on with their uh, uh, forward plans, you know, until the wrath comes without remedy, as the scriptures say. Right. So let's finish that off in Ezekiel, uh, it's like in Amos 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So it behooves you to listen to the perennial prophets of doom. Okay. The lion have roared, who will not fear? The Lord God have spoken, who can but prophesy? 
So knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That scripture is personified through the prophets. We know the terror of the Lord because he spoke of he spoke to us through the spirit. Hundreds, you know, really, when you want to go into it, thousands of years before these things have happened. As the scriptures say, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. All right. And Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Ezra, Daniel, they saw these times. John, a revelator, the prophets of old saw these times. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee prophesied both against many countries. Okay. A wars of, uh, let me grab that. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. All right. Then you prophesied against the Babylonians, which was a great kingdom at the time. All right. The Maccabees brothers prophesied against the um, Greek captivity, so on and so forth. Yahweh Shai prophesied against the Roman captivity. We're prophesying against America, America, all right, which is the daughter of Babylon, all right. So we are in the all right steed, man. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, they abhor him that speak uprightly, all right. So no matter how much you want to nix off the perennial prophets, all right, the reoccurring prophets, guess what? Prophecy is still going to happen, all right? Business, again, going into the article, business groups warns of mass layoffs and catastrophic supply chain disruptions from Biden crack scene mandate, <laughs> as the brother calls it, all right? And, um... What was the other article I was checking out? Right? U.S. admits Pentagon doesn't know how to defend against China's hypersonic missiles. Okay, and we've been talking about World War Three, how basically Babylon is going to be melted, according to Revelations eighteen, Jeremiah fifty, as you know, various precepts, Isaiah thirty four. Right. Another pre another article, the future of money is absolutely digital. Experts tell boom bust. All right. According to Revelations 13 and 16, the MOTB. All right. So listen up with that. Shalom to the elect.